The Allosaurus, arguably the most popular dinosaur of the late Jurassic, is also incredibly misunderstood. Known for its weak bite force, many of those watching would probably refer to the hatchet swing method for how this dinosaur hunted. But times have changed since 2001 and the hatchet swing method has simply not stood the test of time. <laughs> Officially described in 1877 by Ophenial Charles Marsh, the Allosaurus was a highly successful apex predator of the late Jurassic, with six species being officially recognised. Iconic for its head crest and coexistence with other large theropods, such as Ceratosaurus, Torvosaurus, and Saurophaganax, the Allosaurus is arguably most popular, however, for what it lacks primarily a strong bite. Using a finite element analysis on an Allosaurus skull, researchers uncovered that the bite force of Allosaurus ranged from 805 to 8,700 newtons, which for an animal that could grow to two tons, this bite force is actually quite low. However, at the same time, they uncovered that the skull could withstand vertical forces of up to 55,000 newtons. Perhaps a simple scavenger, the researchers theorized that Allosaurus hunted by violently slamming its open jaws onto prey, similar to how we humans would swing a hatchet or a machete. This would produce a powerful but yet efficient bite. But there are many problems with this method, and let's just get right into it. The first thing is, it just doesn't work. Tooth alignment and force vector transfer simply doesn't add up and leaves far too big a chance of breaking teeth or fracturing the lower jaw when biting prey in such a violent manner. While we can imagine the hatchet bite in our minds, real life often doesn't care what we think. Take a look at these reconstruction images for instance and we can now see just how dangerous and ineffective such a biting method would actually be in the real world. But it doesn't stop here. Neck muscle reconstructions have revealed a rather unique development in the neck of Allosaurus, because where else would it be? The neck muscle known as Longosimus capitis superficialis attaches relatively quite low on the skull of Allosaurus, causing ventriflexion and retraction of the head. This allowed Allosaurus to drive its head downwards into prey, holding it in place and then driving its head straight up and back with the neck and body, lifting the prey and tearing off chunks of flesh in a manner similar to modern kestrels tearing off flesh from prey. For comparison, the neck muscles in T-Rex attached from the side and onto the back corners of the skull, acting much like the reins on a horse pulling the head from side to side. The incredible weight of a T-Rex skull produced significant rotational inertia, meaning T-Rex would sway its head from side to side, unable to perform the more precise head movements of Allosaurus with its much lighter skull skull design. If you guys want to understand more about the Allosaurus and how these different muscle groups work together, then I recommend that you check out this incredible video from Ohio University made in 2013. Seeing some of these images, we can better understand how these ancient dinosaurs behaved and better separate fact from fiction. The actual biting method of Allosaurus likely incorporated powerful neck muscles to laterally compress or rotate the skull. The neck muscles of Allosaurus are reorientated towards a downwards compression, as opposed to laterally as seen in other theropods, and is surprisingly similar to modern crocodilians. Read this research paper if you want to find out more. Once the jaw of Allosaurus bites its prey, the weaker jaw adductor muscles would be supplemented by powerful neck muscles rotating the cranium, driving the upper teeth deeper into the target while the mandible, you know, lower jaw, acts as an anchor. The high vertical stress tolerance of the cranium would account for struggling prey and any sudden jerking movements as opposed to stress forces induced from the hatchet swing method. The larger arms of Allosaurus also indicate they served a function and were not simple vestigial limbs. Likely able to maintain stable control with smaller sized prey, the Allosaurus in this case would bite its target then use its strong neck muscles to lift the prey back towards the body 
where the arms would hold it in place, while the jaws begin to sink deeper and clamp down, removing any chance of escape. As time moves on and new evidence is presented, we can begin to better understand how these prehistoric animals lived and behaved. With old perceptions making way for new interpretations, and what we might have once considered to be fact may actually be up for debate. But let me know what you guys think about the Allosaurus. Do you like the idea of the hatchet swing, or are you glad to see it go? Let me know of any other dinosaur misconceptions you would like to see addressed. But until then, thank you for watching the video this far. And if you are enjoying the video, then consider subscribing to the channel and liking the video. Thank you for all the support you guys show me, and I hope to see you in the next video.